Hi there, I'm Dr. Samuel Mitchum. I'm going to talk a little bit about my uh, latest book. Uh, it wasn't about slavery, exposing the great lie of the Civil War. Um, the first thing I think the uh, viewer needs to know is uh, there's a phrase out there, you can't change history. Uh, I don't believe that's true. Uh, I guess it depends on how you define history. Uh, to a professional historian, history is a study of the past with interpretation. To most people, it's just the study of the past. Well, it's not. Uh, all history has interpretation. Uh, so if you change the interpretation, you can change the history. Uh, you can't change the past, but you can change the history. And this is what the left in America has done because uh, of a political genius named uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson. Now, he was not a good man. Goodness and greatness are two different things. But he was a, uh, an excellent politician. And he uh, realized that if the Democratic Party of his day embraced identity politics, they could get the uh, black vote of the black people and uh, win elections that way. And they were quite successful under Lyndon Johnson. In uh, uh, 1956, 75 percent of the uh, African-American voters voted Republican for uh, General Eisenhower. By uh, 1964, over 90 percent of them were voting Democrat. So identity politics has worked very well for the Democrats from uh, uh, basically the 1960s until Donald Trump came along. It'll be interesting to see in the next election uh, how they do because uh, latest polls show uh, a lot of the blacks are going to give up on the Democrats and vote for Trump. And all he said was, what do you have to lose? So um, that's part of the leftist agenda is to change the perception of history and therefore alter the history. Um, and there's no greater uh, example of that than the history of slavery. A lot of, if you took a majority poll in America today, they'd say the Civil War was all about slavery. Well, I don't believe it. And I don't believe it was a civil war because in uh, military parlance, a civil war is a struggle between two or more factions for control of the country. So for this to be a civil war, people like Jefferson Davis, Robert E. Lee, Stonewall Jackson would have as their objective to seize northern cities like New York or Chicago or Baltimore and run them. And I don't believe even their harshest detractors would say that. Um, but if you believe it's about slavery, you've got to believe some other things, that the Confederates were fighting to preserve slavery only, and that the Union soldiers were fighting uh, to free the slaves. And I call that noble cause delusion disorder, because uh, these were not virtuous knights in blue who uh, came down with only the altruistic motives of uh, freeing the slaves. In fact, if you check the histography, or the histography, another pronunciation of it, uh, of the day, you find out that from the late 1860s to the 1950s, um, there was sort of an unofficial truce between the North and the South. The North was fighting to preserve the Union, and because old glory had been fired upon, and the South was uh, fighting to defend their homes and for independence or as a Princeton historian Dr. McPherson said, for liberty. Uh, the great heroes of the war were Abraham Lincoln and Robert E. Lee, and the South admitted that slavery was wrong, but it never admitted it was cruel. And they did not suggest the whole war was only about slavery. And it wasn't. Uh, if you've seen the movie Gettysburg, uh, you got to remember only 6 to 7 percent of enlisted men in the Confederate Army uh, owned slaves. So you would have to believe that uh, 93, 94 percent of the Confederate Army was fighting and risking death so they could uh, preserve slavery for somebody else, uh, which stretches credibility. They didn't go into that hell uh, to save somebody else's slaves. All the same is um, true for the North. If you uh, believe it was all about slavery, you've got to believe the North uh, was so altruistic and loved the African Americans so much that they're willing to sacrifice their husbands, their fathers, their brothers, and their lovers uh, to free them. And that just simply doesn't wash. 
The North, frankly, treated the black people poorly. Uh, Connecticut, they had a law. Uh, if a black person tried to strike a white person, 30 lashes at the public whipping post. <clears throat> 22 years later, they amended that, uh, 1730, uh, to say that if a black person even spoke against a white person, it was 40 lashes. In Massachusetts, they had a law that uh, uh, any black who moved into Massachusetts and stayed more than two months got 30 lashes at the public whipping post. They didn't want them there. In fact, uh, one of the worst parts of slavery was the so-called Middle Passage. The slaves were taken from Africa, mainly by Africans. Uh, according to the University of Boston's African American Study Institute, uh, over 90% of all black slaves were originally enslaved by Africans. And they were transported across the ocean by northern flesh peddlers. The, uh, the slave fleets headquartered in Providence, Rhode Island, and Boston, Massachusetts, later joined by New York City and, in a minor degree, Portland, Maine. Uh, they were not headquartered in uh, Charleston or Savannah or New Orleans. In fact, uh, only 6% of the slaves taken from Africa uh, ended up in southern ports. Most of them ended up in uh, uh, Brazil and uh, West Indies and places like that. So uh, the South's got a bad rap. Uh, it's an actual historic fact that Massachusetts had slavery 78 years longer than did Mississippi. And they didn't divest themselves uh, quite the way that they'd like you to believe. Uh, they did it by a process called manumission. Uh, and it was very carefully crafted so the northern slave owner would, could, would free his slaves but wouldn't, wouldn't lose any money. The way it worked is this, they set a manumission date. Any black born after that date would be free on his 21st birthday. If you were born before that date, you were the slave the rest of your life. But on your 21st birthday, you would be freed. But you could be pretty sure that that slave would celebrate his 21st birthday in a cotton field in Georgia, or a rice plantation in South Carolina, or a tobacco farm in Virginia. They didn't lose any money off of it. Uh, matter of fact, that is my position in the whole book. It wasn't about slavery, it was about money. Some people disagree with that, but uh, read 1 Timothy 6.10, uh, which says, uh, love of money is the root of all evil. Other translations are the love of money uh, is the root of all kinds of evil. I kind of like that better. But um, uh, what was slavery about after all? It's about money. The South was badly treated. Um, in terms of uh, money, they were highly taxed. Um, in 1860, for example, the federal budget was $80 million. $70 million of that was uh, taken from the South in the form of tariffs. There was no income tax in those days. Yeah. So the South, which constituted 29% of the population, was uh, paying over 82% of the taxes. And that wasn't good enough. As soon as the Deep South seceded, they increased the tariff on cotton from 24% uh, to 47% in the Morrell Tariff. <coughs> so they doubled the tax again, uh, which incidentally stayed in effect till 1913. There were a lot of other reasons, but the main uh, reason it all boiled down to money. Made, Lincoln made that very clear. Uh, his first inaugural address, which one historian called his slavery forever address, <coughs> he made it very clear that he would go to war to collect his taxes, but he wouldn't go to war over slavery. As a matter of fact, he supported the Corrin Amendment, which would have forever institutionalized slavery in America. It left it strictly up to the states to determine if they wanted to abolish it, and the federal government would have no say in the matter. And it passed Congress. He got it through Congress. And five states ratified it. It never became a constitutional amendment because the South seceded and they didn't want anything to do with anything with the United States. Um, so um, there were other reasons uh, 19th century fake news, cultural differences, but economics, uh, I think, was the main reason. And I go into that in some depth. 
Anyway, that's a quick and dirty overview of it wasn't about slavery. Book on the uh, causes of the war.